Push that rock with Simpson Matt. Let's answer the question, what is derivative of f of x at x equals a half for this radical function f? Well, we learned last time that the, sorry, that the uh, derivative at some point a on the x-axis is the limit as the run between some this point on the x-axis and the second point of the secant line collapses to zero. Remember we thought of h as the run and then the rise was f evaluated at the second point minus on the x-axis minus f evaluated at the first point. So this is the y value at the second point, y value at the first, and you subtract. So there's the definition of the derivative. And what we're going to do is just plug in only our a is a half. So we're going to have f prime of a half, and it equals the limit as h goes to zero of f of one half plus h minus f of one half all over h because our a was a half and we plugged that in for the a's. Now this is function notation. It means to evaluate the function at this input. Well the input's a binomial so you have to put in a binomial now. So the, imp, the square root function is double the x plus 143 but the double the input but the input is one half plus h, it's a binomial, and then plus 143, okay? And then minus the function again, so I gotta write the function again. Well, this function is the square root of two times the input plus 143, but this time the input is simply a half, so I put a half. And it's all over h. So this just means evaluate the function, putting one half plus h in the place of the input. And then this means evaluate the function again, putting in one half in place of the input. And there's a difference in between them. So I find the difference of those two expressions. Okay? Now we need to compute this limit. The very first thing we're going to do is simplify inside the radical. Let's see if I have room on this page for maybe one more line before we switch papers. Okay, well I distribute the two, two times a half is one, and then distribute the two to the h, and I get one plus two h plus 143 minus the square root of, this is a one, plus 143 is 144, all over h. So we've gotten that far. Let's go to another sheet of paper and continue. So what we will do is remind ourselves what we have here is the limit as h goes to zero of the square root. Now remember we have one plus 143, so that's two h plus 144. And then here we have the square root of 144. So I could leave it to square root of 144 or I could admit that that's 12. And then it's all over h. Now how are we gonna get out of this? I mean, how are we going to get this limit? We can't direct substitute. If I direct substitute 0 for h, I've got 0 on the bottom. And so this, this expression is undefined at h, so un, uh, direct substitution doesn't work. So what we're going to do is rely on our favorite property. And we're going to lot rely on the, our old favorite standby trick that we had so much fun with in pre-cal, a conjugal visit. We're going to multiply by the conjugate of that radical we see. Well, the conjugate is the same binomial, only change the sign in the middle. That's what a conjugate is. And if I multiply the top, well, I must multiply the bottom by the exact same thing. So I'm actually multiplying by form of one here and not changing things. Now, getting an equivalent expression everywhere but at zero. Now, when you multiply conjugates, you square the first term. Well, when you square a radical, you get the radicand. So I squared this term, to, and that gave me the radicand. You square this term, 
Squaring 12 gives me 144. And then you find the difference. It's called the difference of two squares rule. So there it is. And I have h times the square root stuff down here, this conjugate. And I'm not gonna distribute the h, that'll just entangle it. I'm trying to, I'm really hoping to make the h go away. Now I can't cancel yet because of this plus. But once you realize those go to zero, then you're left with factors that can cancel. See, we can reduce the common factor now. We have two times h, and down there we have h times a really complicated mess. So now you can reduce, because now they're common factor. Can't reduce on that step. Not legally, anyway, but we can here. So now we've gotten rid of the h in the denominator that was causing us so much consternation that we couldn't direct substitute. We have 2 over the square root of 2h plus 144 plus 12. And we can just direct substitute. That's what we'll do. ds for direct substitute. That'll give us 2 over the square root of 2 times 0 plus 144 plus 12. Well, that's 0. That goes away. So you just have the square root of 144. Well, we know the square root of 144 is 12. We've done that several times in this problem already. So we see that we have uh, 2 over 24 or 2 over 2, 12, uh, 2 times 12, whatever you want to write there, which is 1 12th. And that is the derivative at a half. The value of the derivative at a half is 1 12th. Math made simple at Simpson Math.